The question is, you know, we many of us as amateur astronomers spend quite a bit of time in the night sky. So why would you want to do an observing program? We're going to talk about that. And I'm going to show you how we can help you as the astronomical league. A lot of effort been put in to build these programs. And I think that you will, any one of you will find a program that is of interest to you. So first of all, here's what we can provide for you. Directions for your observation. So like many of us, I work full time and my observing time is very precious. I find myself going to about three star parties a year, which is about maybe 15 to 16, 17 days a year. And most, most often I don't get out of home because I live across from a naval shipyard, bright lights, it's, it's just not easy to do. So this gives me direction and, and thoughts and, and plans for my very limited observing time. Uh, like I said, a goal for your precious time. And also with the Astronomical League, you can get a reward for your efforts. We'll talk about that. It also helps you to focus on maybe a specific object or follow in the footsteps of some great observers. And many of you may know of any of these folks. Some of you may not be familiar with all of them. Uh, one of my favorite is E.E. Uh, e. e. Bernard. He's a uh, Bernard Starr is named after him, of course, but he's famous for a dark nebula and we have a program to observe it. So a great opportunity to maybe follow in Herschel's footsteps as well. So each program offers a certificate and then depending on the level of the program you complete uh, a, a pin and we'll see what those pins look like as we get going on there. It's an example of a certificate and pin for the Herschel 400. And you're required to observe usually a specific number, usually it's about 100 objects or so. In the case of the Herschel 400, it's obviously 400. It's a lot of effort to go in, go in for that observing program, but it's really worth the time. And there are no time limits for any of the programs. There are one program that has an age limit, and we'll talk about that. None of you will meet that requirement for the age limit of 10. So. Uh, when you reach the requisite number of objects, your observing logs are examined by either an appropriate authority, the person that manages the program, or maybe uh, the program allows an officer in your club to, to review the logs. And then uh, a lot of societies, such as my own, we post the awards on our website and we present the awards at meetings if we have the opportunity, the person is there. It gives you a little public recognition for all the hard work you've done. And if I may, if you have any questions while we're Going along, please feel free to ask. I don't have the chat window up, so if you want to chat, I guess I should put the chat window up. Huh? Well, okay. So each program is designed not only to show a variety of objects in the sky, but they also familiarize yourself with how your telescope works. So you may uh, have an opportunity to use filters or specific uh, magnifications and kind of kind of learn the night sky as well as getting the most out of your telescope. It'll also help you learn some night sky na navigation. And for many beginners, that's difficult, trying to get through this uh, night sky that's like looking at a map and we, those sky charts you have are great, but sometimes hard to look through. So this gives you some opportunity to learn it. And I know that me personally, my personal a journey started off with the, the Messier objects, which are pretty bright. And as I moved on to different objects, such as globular clusters or open clusters, and then the Herschel objects, I got to enjoy galaxies and I can, anytime I observe now, I spot those dim galaxies and gotten very good at it just because of the experience with these programs. But also learn a little bit of eye training and how to look at different objects such as um, uh, averted vision and so forth. So something to think about. Now, let's just take a quick glance at, there are several levels of programs, beginner, intermediate and advanced. We're going to talk about each of these programs briefly. But it gives quite a large number of programs that you can see that are uh, options for beginners if you're new to the program. If you want some more options to look at something more complex, you can see here are some intermediate levels. Um, I will say that I don't think the Messier program is really an intermediate level program, except that we do not allow computer aided comp scopes to be used. You have to do it manually. So I think it is more complex than it. That may seem at first, even though they're bright objects. And then we have a, a smaller group of advanced programs. And again, we'll uh, we'll chat about those a little bit, and then I'll give you some options for uh, 
how to how to fill, fulfill those requirements. So, first of all, every program requires that you use a log sheet. And in each program, it'll tell you what you have to log specifically. And I personally use a Word file and I build those uh, observing logs myself and put everything down on the log that's required from filling in the blanks as I do the observation. This is an example of a log. I am not that prolific. This is not my log. I don't, I don't write that much about the objects that some people do. I need to get better at that. You also have to be a member of the Astronomical League. And uh, as Chuck mentioned to me, you, your club is a member of the Astronomical League. So uh, that is all included with your membership. All these programs and these certificates and pins are, are no cost to you because you're a member of the League. If you're not a member of the League, you can join as a member at large and there's a cost of $30 a year. So let's just take a walk through some of the programs. What I think you'll find that everyone here listening today will find a program that they may find interesting to them. And the, the goal has been at the Astronomical, Astronomical League to not only include everybody's interests, but also to include the style of observing, whether it be naked eye, binocular, telescope, or even imaging. Many of the programs that started out as binocular programs, we have now included as imaging. And I know that we, as we get more complex and, and, and actually better equipment to make imaging, um, I won't say easier, but a little easier than it has been over the years, more people are getting an imaging. We wanted to appeal to those folks as well, so they're not excluded from observing. Uh, so just a quick look, active galactic nuclei. I have not done this program. Is of interest to me. I'm not sure that the telescope I have would be quite big. I have a 16 inch uh, daub, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get those objects, but that's next on my list or down the road. So that might interest you. Uh, if you're into binoculars, we have uh, several binocular programs. In this case, the double star program, which I have not done the advanced, I've done the regular double star program. And what I find when uh, after being a telescope observer, when you get into looking with binoculars, it is quite a different experience. You end up seeing a much wider field of view and consequently you get a different perspective, I think, of the night sky with those binoculars. I know initially when I started doing the double star program with binoculars, it was a little difficult because there's such a wide field. Once I became accustomed to it, it was very enjoyable, very enjoyable. Okay, we also have uh, an advanced observer program which requires you to complete 15 of the, uh, the uh, programs after Master Observer, just kind of a sequence of observing after Master Observer. This is a fairly new one uh, we approved last year. So uh, as a national program director, my fellow colleagues and I, we uh, are responsible for reviewing and approving and recommending to the national board to accept these programs. This is a new one. And the, uh, the purpose of this program, as you can may want to, may read there, is that it's uh, constellations that may be uh, from different cultures, Native American cultures, different cultures throughout the world. Most of our, our, or all of our constellations in the Northern Hemisphere are Greek related. And of course, Southern Hemisphere, we can kind of thank uh, Magellan and his trip around the world for most of those constellations down there. So this is an opportunity to go look at the stars in a little different perspective in it. It's a naked eye program. I think you might find that very interesting. I have not accomplished this yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Analemma program, if you are a uh, sun observer, it's an opportunity to, to plot the sun for a year and then do uh, an analemma plot and then do some calculations. It's a kind of interesting program. I think I, again, haven't done this, but uh, I know that uh, what it's um, up there, is it Eureka that has the uh, big sun plot up there near you guys there the big park along the river is that eureka no not eureka oh it's uh reading isn't it yeah reading anyway sorry uh okay the art peculiar galaxy program which i'm working on now uh halton c arp was an astronomer that started looking at galaxies that were interacting with each other and causing them to be distorted and this is an opportunity to view a hundred of those of those particular objects and there's a northern ARP, and there's the pin there, and then there's a southern, depending on where your location is through the night sky, so or on the earth. So, opportunity to enjoy that. Uh, if you like patterns in the in the stars, stars, asterism program might be for you. 
um, there's a list provided. Um, I will say that we've had a little bit of difficulty with this program because people look at asterisms and they see different things than other people might see. So some of them are pretty hard. And one of them, I, you know, like the ray gun, or there's one actually called the Stargate, and I've observed that one. It actually looks like the Stargate. So, uh, but some of them with a uh, ray gun, I'm not sure I'm getting that. But you know, if you look at Delphinus, you, you you see a dolphin. I think that's probably one of the few constellations that really look like what what it says it is. But some some asteroids are tough. So but you might hey look, enjoy that program. This is the telescope program as well as naked eye. Uh, asteroids are are certainly floating around, and there's a Plenty of opportunity if you like watching those. I am not somebody that plots asteroids, but a member of my club has got the gold award and he just loves looking at asteroids. So if you're interested in that, great opportunity to get credit for your observations. Uh, there's a certificate program here for looking at astronomy before the telescope, kind of talking about, hey, what did ancient man see? You know, maybe Stonehenge type things or, or, the, or the Egyptians. And hey, we, we know that uh, Sirius, it's called the dog star based on the that's where we get the name of the dog the dog days of summer because the greeks the egyptian would see that star coming up and it'll be getting hot soon so i mean those types of things you might might be interested in a little bit of history there uh, beyond polaris fairly new program just an opportunity to kind of naked eye of the night sky and see see what's out there that might interest you and kind of pull some friends in maybe hey try this program and see what you think and maybe enjoy the night sky and get get to love it as many of us do here. Uh, here we talked about this earlier, the binocular double star, only 50 observations. That's the pin there, it comes up. Opportunity to uh, get those binoculars out. We actually have a binocular master observer certificate as well because we have uh, quite a few binocular programs now. And uh, again, I enjoy looking at binoculars, it gives me a different perspective. <clears throat> Uh, and there it is. The, the requirements for binocular master observer are there on the screen. Several programs you have to accomplish so that you become a recognized uh, binocular master observer. And you know, it's always kind of neat to get a little recognition for all the all the hard work that we put in. Uh, binocular Messier program fairly straightforward. We observe uh, 50 of those objects for. Uh, uh, of the messy objects in your binoculars, and because they're bright objects, they're fairly straightforward to find. And this is a required program for you to qualify for master observer. Binocular variable stars. Um, this is associated with the uh, American uh, Association of Variable Star Observers, AVSO, and uh, you will actually provide data to them by doing this program as well as the variable star program for telescope observations. Bright Nebula, uh, it's a couple years old. The difficulty we've had with this program, you've got to observe 60 of them, but some of them are pretty dim. And we've had some complaints that uh, folks can't see them in the smaller telescopes, like eight inches or below. And so we're trying to revise a program to make it a little bit more realistic. But if you like Bright Nebula, it's a great opportunity. You can see, of course, Orion here, but uh, many other objects out there. And again, as we observe, different aspects of the night sky. We learn more about the creation of our, our universe and how our galaxy and solar system fit in it. So, and Bright Nebula are certainly part of it, the next stage of uh, reforming new stars. Uh, some of you may remember uh, um, Sir, uh, oh gosh, sorry, sorry, I'm English observer. Darn it all, he just passed away recently. Patrick anyway, Caldwell Moore. Thank you, Patrick Moore. His middle name was Caldwell, and he formed a list of 70 uh, different or 109 objects throughout the southern and northern skies. And if you observe those, then uh, you can earn that constellation or that pin. Uh, unfortunately, he can't sign the certificates anymore, but in the past, he has actually signed the certificates. I have one signed by, by Patrick Moore. Great observer, great, great amateur. Carbon star program. So if you want to get out of uh, looking at uh, some dim fuzzies, you can get out there and look at carbon stars, which are stars coming towards the end of their life. Now, in this case, there's a manual that you have to purchase from the Astronomical League. It's $10. It gives you some in insights in the carbon stars as well as the observing list. And you can see the pin there is a 
a reddish looking star, but don't be fooled. Not all carbon stars are red. Uh, some of them are, are look like any other star, but they are coming towards the end of their life as they uh, proceed towards becoming uh, the next stage, which would be a, a red giant. Uh, comets are a great program. You have to observe uh, a little minimum of 12 to get the silver award and then 18 for the gold. And uh, these are requirements what you have to, to look at. But uh, I know a lot of us uh, over the years have had an opportunity to see some great comets, but this is an opportunity to look for some of those lesser comets with a telescope that uh, come by almost every year, you get several comets that come through. The, uh, the actual uh, requirement is if it doesn't have a tail, you have to observe the comet over several nights. So if you are if you like watching comics and follow in the footsteps of uh, Charles Messier and, and actually E. Bernard started off observing comets. He, he made enough money from observing comets to build his house years ago. So Constellation Hunter, this is a program that I, I am the manager for. And uh, you have Northern and Southern uh, hemisphere, 39 in the north and 57 in the south. And it is a naked eye program. And all you have to do is sketch each one. And so my recommendation to a lot of people is if you're gonna do the program, there's a northern pin and there's a southern pin with the southern cross. Um, I did the program when I initially com uh, completed the program, I did it from a dark sky site. And there are a lot of stars that you have to draw in each constellation. The requirement is, only draw the stars you can see. So if you're gonna do it, do it from your urban area in Sacramento, you have less stars to draw, a little less work, but something to think about. Good program for learning a night sky. A lot of folks uh, start off with the Messier program, but my recommendation is for new observers to start with this program, it helps you learn the night sky, and you know where you're, where you're heading when it comes time for those Messier objects. One of my favorite programs, the Dark Nebula program, uh, follows in the footsteps, as I said, of E. Bernard. And for me, when I did this program, it was I had a whole different perspective on how to observe the night sky. When we're looking for our normal dark sky objects, we're looking for light. But in the case of dark nebula, you're looking for really the absence of light. And so I had to really change my perspective and pay attention to the sky in a different way. And now, when I scan the night sky, looking for those dim fuzzies, I oh, there's a dark nebula or a opaque part of the sky that is really just gases kind of forming into the next star. So great, great program. Uh, lots of uh, interesting objects to look at, including the, the horse head, which is always a challenge in any telescope. So you don't have to observe the horse head, but I, I did, and it was nice to, to be able to see it. If you're into outreach or trying to preserve the night sky, Dark Sky Abbott program, which is a function of a kind of the uh, international uh, um, night sky network, uh, kind of a function of that, a fallout of that organization, we've created this program for people to be advocates to preserve the night sky. It's a great opportunity. You might find that interesting. Do a little outreach, you have to do some, some, uh, some stumping in your community to maybe change the lighting requirements or just talk to folks about, hey, how to put in the appropriate lighting in their homes to not block out the night sky, which we all know in urban areas, it's, it's, it's practically gone, very hard to see. Uh, another binocular program, this is for deep sky objects, um, much of the more brighter ones, but they're certainly not the Messier ones, a great opportunity to get out there. If you, like I tell a lot of folks, hey, um, they say, well, what kind of telescope should I get? And I said, well, do you have binoculars at home? Well, yeah, said, well, it's just two telescopes strapped together, get that out, just scan the night sky, you get a lot of work out of those binoculars. Here's another opportunity to get those binoculars out. Double stars. Um, they are required for the master observer. And this is a, another aspect of astronomy that many of us, as I'm a, I tend to be a galaxy hunter, deep sky objects, and you get into double stars, it's a different, different perspective. <clears throat> Looking at bright pinpoint objects, and trying to separate two stars from each other. And in fact, uh, Raj mentioned uh, to the double star in uh, the Pleiades, the, the one and two there, that's a double star. So an opportunity to find those and, and understand the motions of double stars and trying to following the footsteps of many of uh, uh, Otto von Struve, who was a double star, and many of those Struve objects you'll have to go find. So. This is a program here, Earth Orbiting Satellites, I've not accomplished. It is uh, 
to me, it looks pretty darn complex. Uh, there are many satellites there, and, and I understand doing the program, you learn, you know, my understanding is satellites that go north to south are typically spy satellites, satellites that are falling overhead are more communication satellites. So you, you learn all those things, and you also look for uh, space debris, which is a lot of them up there, iridium flares, so, so on and so forth, and learn about active payloads. Sounds pretty fascinating, but uh, those are pretty dim. But I know that for me personally, I put a telescope up to the night sky and I'll see things flowing through the field of view. I'm like, oh, another satellite, more stuff up there. And as we all know, I think, uh, I don't know which company is getting ready to put all those satellites up there to get international um, internet throughout the world, right? So that's gonna- Starlink <laughs> by Elon Starlink. Musk. That's the one, Elon Musk, yeah. A lot the same guy that put a, a car into space, right? There's a Tesla's there. Uh, flat galaxies program. If you're a galaxy observer, this is an opportunity to take a look at uh, flat galaxies. You're also allowed to do it uh, photographically as well. Uh, kind of just a, a way to look at galaxies from a different perspective, <clears throat> specific with specific features. We also have an imaging program specifically to help learn imaging called the Foundations of Imaging that was new this year. If you're interested in learning it or trying trying it out, that's a great opportunity to, to learn that skill. I I personally do not image, I'm a visual observer, but this certainly is an allure based on some of the beautiful uh, photographs out there. Uh, galaxy groups and clusters, that requires a booklet. Uh, and uh, you're, you're observing different types of objects. You have to observe 120 out of the 250 objects listed in a different trios, Hickson groups, and able galaxies. So something to think about if you like the deep sky work, might be something to do at your observatory up there in the dark skies, have, a, have an opportunity to get a little deeper into the night sky. The Galileo program was introduced in the year of Galileo 2004. The idea was to follow in Galileo's footsteps with some of his observations. You have to use a low power of, in your telescope between 10 and 20 uh, power and observe you know, Jupiter and, and the moon and so forth, just like Galileo did. So it's kind of an opportunity to go, hey, Wow, this is what Galileo looked through, and his scope was no, not anywhere near the quality that we have. So something that'd be kind of kind of awesome to try out. Globular cluster program. That's a, a, a the second program that I did after the Messier's requires 50 observations, and and frankly, uh, I fell in love with globular clusters after that. And my first observation almost every night when I go out is to look at M13 uh, and take a look at that beautiful globular. There are a couple, you have to at least find one globular cluster from the challenge list. And those are either in the Palomar catalog or in, in the uh, Andromeda galaxy. So those are quite the challenge to find those one at one, but it's, it's worth the effort. Nice to, and he also, the booklet teaches you about the, the construction and uh, formation of, of, of uh, globular clusters as well. So again, learning about the different objects in the night sky. <clears throat> Herschel 400 program that follows in the footsteps of one of the, the greatest amateur, in my opinion, that ever lived, Sir William Herschel. Um, you have to observe 400 of the objects in the list from the book. It's also required uh, for master observer, if that's your goal. And we'll talk about what the requirements are. Um, the book talks a little bit about uh, Herschel's life. He and his son both carried on the project that formed the NGC catalog, a lot of it. And we'll talk about the Herschel Society, which is associated with those observations. There's the pin there, which of course is a picture of his famous telescope that he used in uh, England to do his observations. Let He could move it in azimuth, but he had to let the earth rotate around to see him. So I wouldn't want to be the guy who had to lift that scope up and down. Herschel two is a continuation of his list, another 400 objects. And this program was put together by Rose City astronomers in here, up here in Portland. And the idea behind this program is certainly to look at the continuing NGC list, but also to be more involved with in providing uh, notes and descriptions so you can describe these objects in a little more detail as Herschel did. It's a good continuation and a great way to get better at astronomical note taking. There's the pin there. Now, the Herschel Society which I uh, am the program manager for, essentially is uh, <clears throat> if you've completed the Herschel one or two program, you're a member of the society, quote unquote. But the other option is there are 
thing called the Herschel Hustle. So uh, Herschel in one night observed 74 objects. And the object, the goal is well, not unlike the Messier uh, challenge doing that in one night. This is the same thing if you can see those in one night, provide their certificate. There's also a silver and gold certificate, which means you've op observed 1,200 of uh, Herschel's NGC, or in the case of the gold, you do the whole 2,379 objects that he uh, contributed to the list. So, well, and we have a few members so far of, of the gold and silver side, but not many. But a lot of people I know it's their goal, look at the NGC list. The Southern NGCs are mostly related to uh, William Herschel's son, John, but uh, it's an opportunity to, again, follow in one of the footsteps of the greatest observers, uh, in my opinion, in, in the universe here. <laughs> uh, hydrogen alpha, if you are into looking at the sun and you have the equipment to do uh, H alpha observing, this is a great opportunity to see the sun uh, different than our white light filters provide. And uh, good opportunity to, to do things during the daylight when you're not out under the night sky. So good opportunity to, to uh, try out your gear too. I have a HOPA filter, but I have not completed this program yet. Um, not for lack of sun, though Seattle doesn't have near as much sun as, as Sacramento. Uh, it certainly uh, just haven't gotten out there during the day. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the library telescope program, but uh, this is a program that was uh, developed from a club in New Hampshire, don't remember their name, but their idea was to take small the spar blast four inch, four and a half inch reflectors, outfit them so that the average citizen couldn't uh, damage them very much, but they could check them out from the library and get out and look at the night sky. Uh, the Astronomical League actually gives away uh, several of these each year to each region. You have to apply your club's name and they put it in a hat, and draw it out, and I've, I've won two of them. A friend of mine up the uh, farther up north in this state has won about three of them and we have them in the local library so that they can be checked out and people can enjoy the night sky. Along with that, uh, the Astronomy Club, my club has their information attached to the telescope. So if people are interested in joining or more information, they can contact us and learn more. So it's a great opportunity for outreach. And that's what this program is for, is to get those scopes into the libraries and then provide the outreach through the library program. Oh yeah, I forget I have all these uh, fancy uh, graphics here. Okay, local galaxy groups in, in the neighborhood. Again, that's a, a booklet that's required for this. It's a little pricey, but uh, uh, gives a lot of information on all the different objects. These are essentially objects associated with uh, our local group. You have to look at some of our dwarf galaxies uh, and associated globulars and so forth. It's about 88 objects. So great opportunity to kind of get familiar with the local group if you haven't had opportunity to look at in detail. There's the pin there. The lunar program is an excellent program for learning the moon. It is also required for master observer. <clears throat> it's a fairly straightforward program. It doesn't require complex notes. It's primarily a checklist. And you observed 100 features on the moon. And that the goal of that is to get to enjoy the moon and understand different aspects. And it's naked eye, binocular, and telescope. And the rules are say, hey, it says observe this object naked eye can't see it naked eye, you can use a binocular. And if you can't see it with binocular, you can step up. So uh, it's, it's, it's a nice way to learn the moon. And then follow on with that, the program that I run, Lunar 2 is much more complex, uh, more involved primarily with target act, targets of um, specific craters, and then specific phases of the moon of those craters to see how the albedos change and the different effects of shadows. It's a great program. I, I uh, completed this program and then an opportunity came up to uh, become the program coordinator for this. And I took it, that was my first step into being a volunteer for the Astronomical League. Since, uh, since then, I've become uh, one of the program, uh, national program uh, directors, which, which has it's been nice to help provide some direction because I really believe in the observant programs. Um, uh, two apparitions ago for Mars, we built this program. It's a very uh, detailed, complex program several different areas that you can study, atmospheres and so forth, when Mars is at opposition. It's a great opportunity to get out there and look at Mars. We all know that Mars sounds wonderful, but it is very difficult to observe. You gotta have the perfect conditions of, of uh, seeing and transparency to get a good view, but when it happens, it's just outstanding. So if you like observing Mars, take a look. 
Now, the Master Observer Program is more a, a conglomerate. You have to complete 10 of the Astronomical League programs. Of those, you have to complete five required, which we've already kind of talked about. The Messier, the binocular Messier, the lunar, double star, and the Herschel. And then with that, five other different uh, programs. So you get a total of 10. And you get this pin that has a combination of uh, got an open cluster and a galaxy and so forth. It kind of said, hey, it's the master observer. Now, that was a, created about uh, 10 years ago. I finished it in uh, 2009. So I guess it was created about 2008. Since then, a lot of people have completed and they're looking for other challenges. So we completed a master observer progression. So we now have not only a master observer, but we have a silver level, a gold level, and a platinum level. Essentially, silver is, is uh, 20 programs, gold is 30, and uh, platinum is 40. And there are about 52 observing programs. So, and then there are specific requirements at each level that you end up, by the time you're done the platinum board, you have to do uh, have a plump, it's the radio astronomy program as well. So you become quite a well-rounded observer by the time you uh, put on a platinum. I am not a silver, gold, or or platinum observer and one thing that's holding me back is i haven't completed my uh, solar system program yet so i've got to get wrapped up on that I get some jupiter observations to finish to finally get through that kind of a deep sky object guy though i love those galaxies <laughs> uh, so uh, the messier fairly straightforward is rule book you have to purchase and then you have to observe uh, 70 to get uh, a certificate, but to get the pin, you have to observe all 110 of Charles Messier's objects. It is the most popular program we have in the Astronomical League, and it does follow in the footsteps of Charles Messier. And this pin right here is his stylized monograph of how he signed his name. So Charles Messier, if you can find it in there, good for you. It's quite stylish, but that's the Messier pin there. Meteors, if you like watching meteor showers, this is a great opportunity to take credit for that. There are different hour levels, as you can see there, 12 through 36 hours, and uh, you end up getting a, a nice pin, little meteor showers. I think most of us love working at meteor showers, uh, and then this opportunity to get credit for it. Uh, multiple star program is just that. It goes beyond the double star program, and it provides you an opportunity to look at triple star systems and kind of uh, take credit for that as well as after you're doing the double star, it might be a good next step for you to take a look at. Near Earth objects um, is an exciting for amateurs to participate in long term citizen science. This is more citizen science, which we're getting more into. Different levels up to 25 objects to receive the certificate and pin. I have not done this uh, program, but it certainly is related to satellites and other objects, not just satellites, though. So. Also, uh, any asteroids or maybe uh, any of our Trojans that we have that follow our plan. Nova observing, uh, this is a total of uh, 50 for the silver and 100 for the gold to watch for, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> take credit for any Novas that you may observe. And then you also have to be submitted to the uh, AVSO as part of your uh, opportunity to co collect the certificate and pin. So. And I know a lot of us are uh, on websites that talk about the supernova and we turn our scopes to those faraway galaxies so maybe an opportunity to take a look at that. They include obviously supernova, dwarf nova, and uh, regular nova. Opera cluster program, I manage this uh, program. Uh, this is um, probably one of the more difficult programs that I accomplished and primarily the difficulty was trying to not only um, classify them, but you don't have to classify them as Trumpler did, but you kind of learn Trumpler's classification system. But the difficulty is trying to discern from the galact from the, the uh, background of the Milky Way that the open cluster is really there. Where, where are the boundaries of it? So it's a pretty challenging program, but certainly worth the effort. Uh, I will say after about 125 open clusters, I, I got past the awe and beauty of them and say, all right, another open cluster. Okay, here we go. So can be a little tedious, but it's worth the effort. I recommend it highly. And I'd be happy to send you a pin and certificate to complete it. If you're into outreach, which I know with an observatory, I'm sure you are, um, there's, a, there's a three levels of outreach, including uh, the beginning level of 10 hours for outreach. There's a 
uh, Outreach Stellar Award, and then you have a Master Outreach Award, which is 100 hours. I have this award, uh, and there's the pin there. Excuse me, when you get the master level, you get a little star cluster that goes over the top of that pin. Uh, and the idea is to uh, most, most anything that you do for outreach can count. I uh, teach an astronomy club at my wife's, my wife's a junior high teacher, and I teach astronomy club there every week or every couple of weeks that I have for several years, and I use those hours as well. So good opportunity to take credit for the hard outreach that you as an owner of an observatory, as a club, I'm sure you do quite a bit of it. You talked about some of solar observing, all those things would count. It's a great opportunity to get some credit for that hard work. Because what's the future of our program but outreach, right? Get those young kids away from their phones and, and doing uh, some night sky observing. Planetary Nebula, it's another great program to learn about <clears throat> the formation of Planetary Nebula. It is not a simple program. There's 110 of them you have to observe, and all of them are pretty hard to find. Some of them are stellar. I have just recently, I completed the, uh, the initial program, which was intermediate, excuse me. And uh, then I finally said, well, uh, the, the, the old program required me to go south of Washington State. And I just didn't have the time or opportunity to do that. So they finally produced a Northern list. So I just finished it and, and finished this pin. Interestingly enough, my last observation, I was on our business trip to San Diego and I went up to Bakersfield to visit my sister and a buddy of mine works at the college there and he had access to a 10 inch scope and I had one more uh, planetary nebula to get. I used that to finish that observation up in the, near Lancaster. So it was kind of nice to do that in Southern California where I grew up. If you're into radio astronomy, and I don't know that many of us are, but there's an opportunity to uh, build your own or get a radio telescope. There are three different levels, bronze, silver, and gold. Uh, the radio gold level is required if you're gonna ever become a platinum observer. So uh, many of us are maybe not sketchers, but we do draw the objects that we see. Uh, when I did the Messier program, I decided I wanted to draw each object. Between you and me, I draw with my feet, but I thought by sitting, taking the time to draw the object caused me to not only look at the object, but I stopped and really to see and look deeply at it and get a better appreciation for it because I took me that much longer to draw it. Uh, so consequently, there's a program for sketching. And a lot of these objects you may have already looked at through your time with the telescope, but this is an opportunity to go sketch them, visit some old friends and practice some techniques and uh, I've learned some techniques because I followed this program and I've gotten better with my sketching. So not that I'm an artist, but hey, it's nice to do it better. Solar system program uh, helps us look at our local solar system. You have to observe all the planets and other aspects of the solar system. Uh, there are 25 projects that are listed or uh, 30 projects. You have to do 25 of them. And they you know, make it made talk, looking at uh, transits of uh, the uh, Jovian moons, uh, occultations of the Jovian moons, the moon, Venus, all, and so on. So if you like the solar system, this is a good program. I, again, I'm almost done. I just haven't completed it yet. I'll get there one of these days. This is a new program. Spectroscopy certainly requires some specialized equipment. If you're interested in that, take a look. I have not uh, uh, done, done this program, but the prerequisite is that you do the stellar evolution program, which I have completed. And we'll talk about that shortly. Does your uh, observatory have a spectroscopy capability? Do you do that in your observatory? Not to my knowledge. No, okay. I mean, Although I think you know, some of our members may have their own equipment individually. Okay. okay. I mean, uh, it's fascinating. Then that's how we figure out chemical composition of, of uh, stars and other areas of the sky, but it's a great opportunity. If that's what you'd like to do. Okay, so here's one program that I don't think any of your members, at least that are in this meeting, can, can accomplish. You have to be under 10 years old uh, by the time you complete it, but it's an opportunity to give our younger observers this booklet and it has log sheets in it and they can learn to log their observations and find the objects in the night sky and then get a, a pin for that. So <clears throat> it's a great outreach program. And purchase a stack of books and take them to outreach and give them the kids and give them an opportunity to get an award for their effort and hopefully pique their interest in the night sky. So if you ever have opportunity to go to the south, 
uh, in uh, South America, Africa, or Australia. A lot of folks I know have gone to Australia and completed this program. This is a binocular program from the Southern Skies. Uh, picks out you know, 50 objects. You can take a lot of people have done that on the short business trips to the South. There's also a Southern Sky Telescopic Program. You have 50 objects, so at least 30 of them have to be below minus 48 degrees and 10 minus, below minus 65. Uh, you got to obviously take a log, and then there's a picture of the of the tell of the award there. Um, I I don't know how many people have ever traveled to the South. I as a sailor uh, of the submariner for my first 15, 16 years, and then my second half I became a naval officer. I traveled with aircraft carrier, and uh, first time I ever pulled into Australia, looking up at the night sky, and I wow, oh, there's Orion, and it seems upside down to me. So it's so much higher in a different position of the sky would rather shocking. But to see the Southern Cross personally, definitely worth it. So if you get a chance, the Southern Cross is worth the time. Stellar evolution is exactly that. It talks about how stars are formed from their birth all the way to their death. And you and you have to observe 100 different objects. Most of them you probably observed before, but you have to go revisit them with the idea of stellar evolution which I have completed this program and I really enjoyed it because it really made me look at those objects differently. Hey, there's, you, know, you have bright nebula, uh, gas giants, uh, as well as uh, planetary nebula, all the different life uh, cycle of a star. So it's, it's a very interesting program. I enjoyed the heck out of it, I recommend it. Well, I've got spectroscopy twice, well, sorry about that. Okay, so if you like to do white light solar observing, this is a great opportunity to Take a look at the sun, certainly when it's not at a solar minimum, I think uh, things are picking up a little bit, but uh, you have to do some sketches and learn some terminology associated with the sunspot groups. It's a great, great chance to go to look at the sun and you can you know, do it in your backyard. You don't have to go to a dark sky site. So that's what's nice about some of these programs here you can do from home that you can't do, uh, that you are, I mean, that you might not be able to do dark sky work at home, but you can do these at home. And when I was working on the Master Observer Program, I chose programs that I could do some from home, like the lunar programs, and others from dark sky sites, something to think about. One of my favorite programs uh, made by a friend of mine, Bob Scott, who was up here in Washington, called Two in a View. This is one of those programs that are just fun. And the point is you find 100 objects that are two in a view. In this case, there are two. This is M81 and M82 in the pin, but uh, the thing that one of the the uh, two in the view objects is the M13, the great globular in Hercules, but it has a companion galaxy, or a companion, it's in the same view, not far away, a very small one, uh, six, NGC 6284, I think, don't, don't quote. 6507, I think. 6507, that's it, thanks, Ron. And every time I look now at uh, M13, which is my first object, every time I look, I always look for that galaxy. If I can see that galaxy, it's enough. It's going to be a good night for looking at galaxies. So get the scope tuned up. So this is a fun program. You might enjoy that. And really, it is just for fun. Uh, Universe Sampler. You know, I I think this is a great program, not unlike the Messier program, but not many people have accomplished it. And I'm not sure why. I have not accomplished it. I had a friend try it, and he, he enjoyed the heck out of it. It was a great little program because it samples many different pieces of the uh, night sky, and that may help you define what you like to look at more more readily than just kind of pan it around and choose a program. So I recommend it, but I have not done it, so I can't tell you how much work it is. Another great program you can do from home, urban observing program, 100 objects in the urban club. Uh, some of them are Messier objects, or are, are, uh, objects that are associated with the open clusters. And this is the pin here. What's interesting about this pin <clears throat> is when you flip it upside down, shows you a night sky kind of interesting i didn't know that until the, the guy that, that ran the program terry trees uh, pointed that out so great thing to do from urban skies and, and the requirement is you have to not be able you cannot see the milky way with your unaided eye uh, from the observing location so again it works great in urban and i uh, i did this program out in my front yard and again i live about two miles across the water from the naval shipyard where the lights are on all the time and so uh, it, it worked out just fine Great opportunity to go out and do some deep sky observing, even in an urban environment. A lot of people say, oh, I can't observe urban in the, in the city. Well, you can. Deep sky in the city. Is there a question? Brief correction. It's NGC 6 
6207. 6207. Not, 60, not 6507. That's, that's 60, I misspoke. I'm sorry. No problem, Raj. I should have done it over before I mentioned it because I can never remember that number. 6207. That's correct. Thank you. All right. Variable star program. If you like variable stars, uh, this is a great way to follow in the footsteps of Leslie Peltier. And who hasn't read uh, his famous book, Starlight Nights, right? Hopefully you have. If you haven't, I recommend that book highly. That was his passion. And uh, this talks about looking at variable stars and learning the night sky. I have a member of mine who was our past president. He is a, um, an acolyte, so to speak, of Leslie Peltier, and he loves this, the variable stars that he had never done an observing program, but he went and did this one. So great opportunity to learn the science of observing variable stars. I think you ought to give it a chance, if you a shot if you enjoy that. Okay, so we've gone into quite a bit of detail about the programs, but now we got to talk a little bit about observing logs. So here is an example of an observing log for the Constellation Hunter program, which I run. And you can see here, what I have done is this is on a Word file and I put okay, the requirements. I have to list the, the constellation name, the date time, seeing and transparency of the observation, as well as the Latin longitude. And then I put the instructions so that I don't have to keep going back and forth to the rules. I have it right there on my log sheet. Makes it a lot easier to uh, to do the work. And I create my own log sheets just because it's convenient. And I try to make you know several pages, uh, several observations on page that can serve paper and weight. But uh, if you don't want to do that, there are other log options. Astrologs offers Messier, Herschel, Deep Sky, and Diary for purchase. I have uh, all of these logs. Um, the Messier is, you can see the log sheets there. They all have a place to do a sketch and all the requirements, as well as a diary if you want to purchase those. Those are a great opportunity that you don't have to make your own. The Astronomical League has several log options on there you can print out as well. So you really have to make your own. Many of us know uh, Uncle Rod, he, he, and he's a contributing editor for ST. He's among one of the most influential writers of amateur astronomy, still going strong. Uh, and his book, uh, Urban Astronomy Guide, is considered, of course, a classic. And uh, this is kind of an older comment, but in a recent interview in ST several years ago, he completed the entire Herschel list. He says, get organized. I don't care how you do it, whether it's a computerized astronomy planning program, like he used, a database program, or even a box of index cards. When you're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of objects scattered across many constellations, you always know what you've seen and what you haven't seen and where. And that's where the logs come in. Helps you see what you've uh, observed. And then a lot of times you can go back and maybe look at those logs and see, hey, I've improved my uh, logging of that information. I've gotten better at it. Or what did I, what did I find interesting in that object? Uh, what I have found, it also helps me to take a little bit more time observing the specific objects so I can get those details so they can write them down or make a sketch. Because a lot of us you know, tend to just go through the night sky quickly or can and we miss out on some of the details. So get organized, give it a try. I personally find that having a plan makes it more enjoyable for me. And it also, as I said, helps me make the most use out of my limited time in the night sky. <clears throat> it also makes me a more skilled observer. I could say that when I started the Mezzi objects, you know, I found all those objects. So it took me six years, frankly. I had a trouble getting into Puppis from this latitude. But, um, I went to try the Herschel objects next, and it was too much. So I backed off and did the globular clusters and open clusters. It's got better observer. And then when I started tackling galaxies in my eight inch Schmidt, I got better at understanding and seeing those objects. So it's a great opportunity to uh, try your skill and and then improve your observing. I would, I think that um, these programs provide us as amateurs an opportunity to observe what we think we're interested in, and again, help us become better observers. Let me say that, uh, as I as I said earlier, uh, for those that may not have been here talking with Chuck, that you, as a Sacramento uh, Valley uh, Astronomical Society. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, SVAS. Yes, uh, are members of the Astronomical League, so you won't have to worry about whether you um, are a member or not. That's taken care of by your club as active members. Uh, and 
you have the capability of accomplishing these programs. And uh, in some cases, it'll tell you to take your logs, and have your president or your uh, Alcor representative review them and provide um, the information to the program coordinator. Or sometimes in the case of me, the lunar program, the logs come directly to me, whether they're electronic or sent in my mail, I review them and then I send a certificate and pin. So if you want to try a program, the best place to go is the Astronomical League website. Just put in Astronomical League. There's a tab for observing programs. And you can look through all those requirements for each program. And I recommend that if you're going to do a program that you print out those requirements for two reasons. One is you know what you're going to have to write down and do to accomplish the program. The second thing is sometimes the rules change, but it is our policy that if you started the program under one set of rules and it changed, you're not required to go back and do all those new rules so that you're not getting jerked around. So um, I recommend just exploring the Astronomical League website, not only for those programs, for other aspects that we offer. There's a lot of, there's a section of notes and information that you might be interested in about astronomical note taking. There's a little section about becoming a professional astronomer, all kinds of areas. So it's a good, good website to look at.